Shalom. Ko Halal Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, Bahashim Rekat Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, whom you ignorantly call Jesus. Much respect to the brothers that are doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. Salutations to the hopeful elect and the confusion of faith that are scattered abroad and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Once again, Shalom. Coming back at you with another lesson this morning. And this one is entitled Esau Edom. The chariots of Israel are coming for you and they are coming soon along with mass destruction and death on this earth, judgment to this wicked kingdom that's spiritually called Sodom and Gomorrah, as it is written in Revelations 11 and 8. And I'm going to start off with a video of an eight-year-old little girl who has a nightmare vision of judgment coming on the earth. And seeing Yahweh Shai, the dark Messiah, whom if you were to see him today, he would be described as a so-called Negro. And the Bible describes him as having woolly hair. Uh, good morning, Brother Victor Wang. Uh, Shalom. So he's starting to pour out his spirit here on the earth. And men, women are getting visions. Children, even Gentiles are getting the visions, not just Israelites. So we're almost home and we're ready to go home because we're sick of being underneath these cavemen, Esau, Edom. So we're going to go into the video and this eight-year-old girl appears to be from the Northern Kingdom, the so-called Native Latino, so-called Native American, Puerto Rican, so, and a lot of the, a lot of the Northern Kingdom worship Esau. When I went to Mexico, I mean, I saw idols of fake Cesar Borgere and this, this Mother Mary garbage everywhere, just about on every corner. They had little small models of them in their windows, businesses, homes, everywhere. So, Yahweh Shai is going to bathe the streets of Babylon with their blood if they don't repent. All right. So these visions are being poured out. And this eight year old girl was terrified. So we're going to go into the video. And I haven't been able to sleep lately either. I mean, this the Holy Spirit has been all over me and not just me, but several other brothers. That's right. A lot of the uh, northern kingdom worship the dead and Santa Maria and all that garbage. So get ready for the sword because this is not a game. And if you're following Esau in this wicked kingdom, get ready for the sword. You've been warned and you can't say you didn't hear the truth. And we got a lot of good step and fetch it southern kingdoms too that are into that garbage. Voodoo and Wicca and witchcraft, roots that they call it here in the so-called black community. So you don't get a pass either. When I go out, I go hard. If you, you're wrong, you're wrong. I'm going to call you out. All right. Your melanin and your pigmentation in your skin is not going to save you. Believe it or not, there's a false doctrine out there by the BOIs or the black-only Israelites that promote that garbage. Get ready for the sword, you wicked Negroes. All right? Nevertheless, the spirit has been heavy on me. Something is in the air. And it doesn't end well for you, Esau, Edom, you savage beast. You have raped, robbed, and murdered and stole all over the entire earth and pillaged a savage animal. So they're coming for you. And through the spirit, I'm telling you this, they are coming for you. You're at the top of the hit list. And you wicked sellout, two-third Israelites that worship this man. Okay? So we're going to let the video play, and then we're going to break down some scriptures. One moment. Let's continue. If 
Viene pronto. She's saying he's coming fast. He's coming fast. So she's being terrified. They're seeing a pissed off Negro coming to do a lot of killing. Yep. Let's show another video. I'm just going to show this one briefly and then we'll go into the lesson. So <clears throat> when you look at these so-called UFOs or chariots of salvation, the chariots of Israel, they're, they're known by many different names in the Bible, the chariots of fire or the chariots of the Lord. All right. These are the so-called UFOs. And we know that they've historically have shown an ability to camouflage themselves in the clouds. So quite often they'll, they'll camouflage themselves where they're not really seen readily by the naked eye because they know how to blend in. So they're acting like, like, you know, how soldiers would go in and camouflage themselves prior to an attack. So these are ships. Yeah, they're coming to save Israel. They're the char chariots of salvation, but they're coming to destroy Esau Edom's kingdom. Yes, so they, they, they have a dual mission. Part of that mission involves destroying this wicked kingdom under Esau Edom. And then the other part of that mission is to save the children of Israel, but the elect. The scriptures are going to prove that, and I'm going to prove that this morning. The elect. The elect are going to be saved. And then the two-thirds are going to be destroyed. The wicked, the wicked sellout Israelites, so-called Native Americans. Americans, Native Latino, Native Negroes, or, or so-called Blacks, they're going to get destroyed, the two-thirds, on this side. And their spirits will be regenerated through the one-third elect on the other side of the, of the destruction. So that's, what, that's what's going to happen. You see? So all types of visions and reports have been increasing over the last few years. You see? So these chariot sightings or so-called UFOs are, are increasing. Not only that, but also the visions. A lot of horrific nightmare visions of death and destruction has been reported by people, particularly of the children of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Native Latino people. But not only the Israelites, but also Gentiles are getting visions as well of going into slavery and being destroyed by fire and mass death and destruction. So there's a reason our ancestors sung, swing low, sweet chariot. What chariot? The chariots of our salvation. And when our ancestors were working in those hot slave fields, they thought that the salvation was, was nearer. You know, so that's why they understood the Bible you know, a little better than what we do today, because a lot of us have been disenchanted living in the caveman's kingdom. So a lot of us have really grown far or distanced ourselves from the word. But our ancestors were singing swing low, sweet chariot coming back to carry us home. And so it won't be long 
before Esau Edom's kingdom is destroyed by nuclear and, and, and chariot fire or high concentrated beams of lasers and nuclear fire. So these chariots are going to come towards the end of that Armageddon or the Third World War. And you can read that also in 2nd Edges chapter 13. So there's a lot of strange things going on. A lot of strange things, but we still got people that want to play games. We got next, Max shared Psalms 104 and 3, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, and who walk upon the wings of the wind. That's right. So our ancestors used ancient terminology that they could identify these flying objects with. Chariots are what? Transport vessels or transportation vehicles. So they use the terminology that they can identify with. And then when they described flight, they said that, they ride upon the wings of the air. This is how they describe flight. We're talking about over 2,000 years ago with, with the prophets. The most high deals with the men of Israel, his servants, the prophets. Okay? So these are some very amazing sights and, and visions that people are also having in their dreams. And a lot of these pictures are coming from the technology that we have today on people's phones. So these chariot sightings have been on the rise lately. And Esau, they're coming for you. You've done nothing but live in wickedness and tell lies and steal everybody's land. So you at the top of the most highest hit list there, buddy. You've been living lavishly on everybody's stuff. Yep, a savage animal. So you've seen a lot of these pictures. I think that's pretty much all of them. There's a couple of more. You see, they can hide themselves in the clouds. And a lot of you wicked Latino, Native American, and Negroes that are worshiping this red, hairy beast, you're going to go down with your slave master. You've been warned. You can't say you didn't know. You've been marked. All right? We sick of this place. Okay? So let's go into the Bible and we'll go ahead and get into the lesson because this is ridiculous on how a lot of Israelites worship this savage murderer. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. But nevertheless, every generation is like this. The Most High raises up prophets to try to warn the people and Israelites. They mock and scoff and they hold on to Pharaoh or to the king of Babylon, or to their slave master, in modern terminology. Some things do, do just simply do not change. Once that hot fire hits your ass, though, it's going to be too late to say I'm sorry. Yep, those laser beams are not playing. So it won't be fun and games then. All right? Book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith Yahweh, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood fire and vapor of smoke that's why i showed you the photos we're seeing signs and we've seen wildfires develop in various parts of the earth unexplained unexplainable fires that look like the chariots of the most high or there was some supernatural phenomena that occurred behind these fires and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord. That's a blood moon. And this sun being turned into darkness, 
That's what you would call today a solar eclipse. And there's another blood moon that's scheduled to occur somewhere around the 16th of next month, July. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now Esau and the Gentiles are like, woohoo, whosoever, woohoo, hey. All right, let's keep reading, devil. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's see who this is talking about. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by the miracles and wonders and signs, which Yahweh did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. And once again, that's the elect. How do we know that? I'm going to prove it. You can't be continuing to live wickedly and talking about you saved. First of all, you're not saved till Yahweh Shai comes back and deliver us. And secondly, he's not saving sinners. The Bible proves that, that he's not going to save willing sinners or people that, that are not trying to repent or change or come back to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. And I'm going to prove that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. We got to go through Jacob's trouble, brothers and sisters, after the tribulation. You see, after this World War Three or Armageddon. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. See? And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's why Isaiah 47 and 3, he says what? I will not meet thee as a man. So he's coming with this supernatural, super powerful glory that no one is going to be able to battle against him or challenge him. But Esau is going to try to do it through the use of his space force and his military. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. His elect, his elect. That's the one third that are going to make it of Israel. Who is the elect? I'm going to show you. Isaiah 45. So Isaiah chapter 45. I think it's somewhere around verse 5. Right here, verse 4. Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by name, and I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Then you're going to have an Edomite saying, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. All right, devil, let's see what world he's talking about. You red, hairy beast. Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. World without end. That's Israel, you lying, hairy caveman. Israel. It's time to cut down and destroy all these lies underneath the cave people. We've been taught nothing but lies here. And it's time for the lies to cease. Okay? Now, where was I? Let's go to Zechariah 5 and 1. Let's see who these chariots are coming back for at the top of their list. And you can read this also in who the adversaries of the Most High Yahweh is in Psalms 83. Zechariah 5 and 1. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, 
This is the curse that goeth forth over the whole, over the face of the whole earth. Every one that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. It said every one that stilleth shall be cut off. Who stole America? Who stole Australia? Who stole South Africa? Who stole Israel? Who stole North America? Canada? Esau, Edom. And who stole us, the children of Israel? Esau, Edom. And I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and in the house of him that swear falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. This flying roll, brothers and sisters, is a so-called UFO. So our brother and prophet, Zechariah, is seeing a what he described as a flying roll. Once again, using ancient terminology that he could identify with over 2,000 years ago. So you got to put yourself into this book. You got to let this book be absorbed into your spirit, not just read it like it's some novel or somewhere. Let's let's talk, go a little more about what the law says pertaining to people that steal another man. So Esau is going to be judged by the law along with the two third wicked Israelites. So let's see what the law says about people that decides to steal, particularly the most high's chosen children, the children of Israel. That law never changed. That's why he's coming to do a lot of killing and bloodshed. Exodus 21 and 16. And he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. We still in his hand, Lord. We still in this caveman's hand. He stole us too. And he still got us and walking around with pride saying he didn't do it. See, there's no way around it. So, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai is going to get you, Esau. He's coming for you. He's coming. And you keep saying it ain't my fault that I do that, but he's coming for you. There's no way around it. Let's see what God say. I'm sick of all these excuses and, and I, I didn't do it and all that. But you living on the wealth and the stolen land and riches. Let's see what the Most High say. Isaiah 14 and 21. Prepare slaughter for his children. Why, Lord? For the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. But I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and the remnant and the son and nephew, saith the Lord. You are your forefathers. Your spirits are regenerated in the third and fourth generation. We've been taught nothing but lies here in Babylon the Great. Lady Liberty, the daughter of Babylon. Let's go to Psalms. Chapter 60, verse 7. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of mine head. And Judah is my lawgiver, the so-called Negroes, or the so-called blacks. All right, Judah, Yahawashai, whom you ignorantly call Jesus, he comes out of this, this tribe. And I don't like saying that word because it conjures up bad spirits or demons. That's a false name. There was no J's in the English language until 1634. And there are no J's in the Hebrew language. Moab is my wash pot. And over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Philistia, triumph thou because of me. Verse 9. Who will bring me into the strong city? And who will lead me into Edom? See, because we know that we're living in Esau, Edom's kingdom right now. Second Ezra 6 and 9 says Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. Jeremiah 25 and 29. 
For lo, I will begin to bring evil upon the city which is called by my name. And should you be utterly unpunished, ye shall not be unpunished. For I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words and say unto them, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation and he shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. So all the inhabitants of the earth benefited off the children of Israel going into slavery or captivity. And we were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth or the four cardinal directions. So that's why they have lived deliciously off free labor, benefiting off of the blood, sweat, and tears of the children of Israel, the Most High's chosen children, the apple of his eye. And that's in Zechariah 2 and somewhere around 9 and 10. He calls us the apple of his eye. They've all benefited. They're all in our neighborhoods with businesses. Jeremiah 25 and 31. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. And the Lord have a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. And he will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Who's the wicked? Malachi 1 and 4 says the Esau Edom is the border of wickedness. And Job 9 and 24 tells us the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Job, uh, Jeremiah 25 and 32. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. What whirlwind? When the chariots of so-called UFOs travel, they travel in a circular motion, and they generate a whirlwind when they're in their, their combat mode, or they're in attack mode. Jeremiah 25 and 33. Salakia, let me scroll this up some. Jeremiah 25 and 33. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Nothing but dead, wicked bodies that mocked this Bible and that didn't want to turn into Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. How, ye shepherds, and cry, and wallow yourselves in the ashes, ye principal of the flock, for the days of your slaughter and your dispersions are accomplished, and ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel. See? And the principal of the flock, that's the wicked elite ruling the earth right now, particularly underneath Esau Edom. All right? The red man, see, bodies from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And when they go into slavery, the wicked elites, their prime, their first mission is going to be to bury these bodies. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the Bible says it's going to take seven months to do so. Isaiah 34 and 1. Isaiah 34 and 1. Come near ye nations to hear. And hearken, ye people, let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world, and all the things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, and he has delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. That's like a thermo mushroom cloud. Or nuclear, a, a mushroom explosion. And all their hosts shall fall down. And as the leaf falleth off the vine. And as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon all the people of my curse to judgment. Who is Idumia? Esau, Edom. They're ruling the world right now. 
The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness, with the blood of lambs and goats, and with the fat of the kidneys of the rams. For Yahweh has a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. You see, they're ruling right now. So he's talking about mass bloodshed and destruction to their wicked pedophile kingdom. There's no way out of it. The chariots of our salvation. For it is the day, I'm sorry, Salakia, Isaiah 34 and 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. They still got us, Lord. They still got us at the bottom with their foot on our necks, calling us all types of names, discriminating against us, first fired, last hired. There's a controversy for Zion. See, they stole us and still have us and saying they didn't do it and it's not their fault, although they're living off stolen wealth and riches and land. All right, so it's coming. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It's going to look like hot molten fire. It's going to look like a burning lake. Okay? That's what it's going to appear to look like from an aerial view. And it shall not be quenched, night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever and ever, and from generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. That's Babylon. America, it's going to become a desolate wilderness. See, let's continue. Isaiah 34, we'll go here first, 34 and 11. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it, and the owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. What does that mean? You're not going to be able to tell one border from another, one so-called made-up state name from another, one made-up country name from another. The whole earth is going to lie in darkness and confusion. You won't know borders. You won't know how to navigate your way around. Everything's going to be total chaos and confusion. Isaiah 34 and 12. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there. And all her princes shall be nothing. These wicked elites that are ruling right now, the national leaders, the high level government and political and religious leaders, they're going to be destroyed. The global elites and international bankers, they're going to be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. And it shall be a habitation of dragons and a court for owls. When you see a, des a desert wilderness, you see Komodo dragons and serpents crawling all over the place. You see an owl hanging out with his capadres. It's nothing but a wilderness. So the animals are gonna just flourish there. The wild beast of the desert shall also meet with the wild beast of the island. And the satire shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay in hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. So there's going to be nothing but animals beginning to flourish in wildlife. They showed us in that movie with Will Smith. I'm trying to remember the name of it. If somebody remember the name of it, where it was a wilderness and Will Smith was there and you saw animals, wild animals all in the city flourishing. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, the wicked elite know the Bible is a true book. They've shown many Armageddon or, or end of days movies. You see, so great destruction and bloodshed and judgment is coming to this wicked kingdom. Yep. And Esau is going to be destroyed. I am legend. Thank you, uh, Frederick Wells, brother Frederick Wells. I am legend. So they know this book is a true book, but they done dumbed down the masses. Esau is a great deceiver. You see, he done made everybody dumb down, but he knows this Bible is a true book. So Esau, you got a great judgment coming there, partner.
great future judgment. So all praises be to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekakadosh. Much respect to the brothers that are doing this work, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. And salutations to the hopeful elect and the confusion of faith that are scattered abroad. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for giving us this truth. Keep the faith and keep the charge. Come back to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Because we know that Amos chapter 9, somewhere around verse 8 and 9, the Bible tells us, he says that all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. So don't let anybody teach you there is no more sin. We're all saved by grace. You know, all lies. In 1 John 3 and 4, he tells us that sin is a transgression of the law. Who was given the law? Read Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20. And the Israelites were given the law, or the Hebrew, the Hebrew Israelites. And then read Amos, uh, I think it's chapter 5, verse 1, where he says, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you. Amos 3 and 1, Salakia. Sorry, excuse me. So don't, you got you to gotta stop listening to the lies of the serpent, a slithering snake. All right. Israel was given the laws. We were supposed to be a beacon of light for the other nations. But we started going off and acting like wild animals. So the most high got a sense of humor. He said, I will set up base men over you. So hence today we're underneath cavemen because we went off. All right. A ba ba ba. Kwam Yasharala. Shalawam.